Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We just come to give God some praise this morning. Saints, let's give our Lord some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Me and some of the ministers, we've been here just praising the Lord, just praising the Lord in, in the sanctuary, giving God praise. Good morning, Mount Calvary. Good morning, saints and friends, those of you that are watching us from Facebook or watching us on YouTube. We just thank God this morning. Hallelujah. Let's continue to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Uh, before your feet hit the floor this morning, uh, we ought to give our God some praise. Hallelujah. We ought to wake up with the fruit of praise on our lips in the morning. We just thank God for his beauty and all that he has done for us. Amen. And all that he'll continue to do for us. We just give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. I believe that's the way we should always start our day out is by giving our God some yeah. praise. Hallelujah. Yes. But I thank you again for tuning in. I thank you for coming to hear a word from the Lord. I thank you for another opportunity to preach God's word yes. uh, in your hearing. Yes. Uh, and I just pray that this word will touch your heart and move you to a better place yes. in the Lord. Amen. Yes. And, and most of all, just to help you to realize that God has already prepared a place for you. Yes, he God has already yes. done work. Yes. Jesus on the cross said it is finished. Yes. He's finished the work. Amen. Yes. And for that we just celebrate in God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. It ain't on you to struggle and strike and try to get right with God. All you need to do is accept Christ. Yes. Christ yes. has already made it possible yes. for us to be right with the Lord. Amen. Now let us take our attention to the book of Luke. Thank you. The book of Luke, the 8th chapter. The book of Luke, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 38th verse through 39. And it reads as follows. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. Mm -hmm. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thank the Lord for the reading of his word and the blessings that it unfolds to us. Amen. This morning I would like to preach from the topic, Has God, has the Lord done anything for you? Amen. Has the Lord done anything for you? Yes, Subtopic. You ought to run and tell that. Oh, come on now. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I thank the Lord for another opportunity to speak his word. Right now we find that in this book, the book of Luke, mm -hmm. we find that in this story there's a man that has been possessed by demons. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that his name, he called his name Legion, for we are many. Mm -hmm. This man that we know in the story had been oftentimes running through the graveyard, as we would say, in the tombs, and that he ran and didn't have any clothing on. And people had tried to chain him and hold him down, but they couldn't chain him and hold him down. But he, he was a wild man, and anybody that passed his way, he would attack them. And so this man had a lot of problems, but he's not no different than many of us. Uh, Job identified it correctly when he said that humans that are born of, of a woman are a few days and full of trouble. Uh, I'm sure that some of us can identify with this man that there's some things that have went wrong in our life at some point. Uh, there's some things where we uh, uh, reacted differently than we should have, but yet it was the only way we knew how to react. It's like something had come over us. Something had taken control of us. And in this story, this man this man was possessed by demons and he was antisocial for one thing. He didn't get along with nobody. Uh, he was isolated. The devil had drunk, driven him out into a wilderness spot, a, a solitude. And, and the Bible says that he cried out at night. Uh, how many of us out there have done yeah. some crying yeah. in the late night hour? And so he was crying out at night. And so he, he scratched himself and cut himself and did all kinds of sort of things that the demons was driving him to do. And, and, and so we understand from this story that this man was in a real peculiar and dangerous situation. Uh, uh, his life had been taken over. It's like he, he wasn't in control anymore. 
But Jesus was on the way. I mean, we ought to praise the Lord right there that Jesus was on the way. The Bible says that Jesus stepped out of the boat and the man came driven by the demons and fell down at the feet of Jesus. And, and obviously the demons recognized the Lord because they said, Lord, what do you want with us? Do not torment us before our time. And so they begged the Lord to send them into the herd of swine. And so Jesus did send them into the herd of swine. And we find that this man that once was driven by demons, yeah. that once had yeah. a lifestyle that wasn't conducive to being a human. Yeah. We find in this story that people, when they found out, they came to see what Jesus had done. Yeah. They saw that the man that once was running wild in the wilderness. Yeah. The Bible says he was sitting down. Yeah. All glorify his name. Yeah. He was sitting down at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. And it also said he had some clothes on. Yeah. And, and then they said that he was there and he was calm. Yeah. He wasn't, you know, he was in his right mind, as the Bible says. Yeah. A sound mind. Yeah. In other words, you could communicate with him and he could communicate back. Uh, he wasn't an animal anymore, uh, so to speak. But but they was amazed at what Jesus had yeah. done for this man. And, and, and so they were so fearful of what it was that Jesus had done that they said, hey, look, Jesus, you got to go. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you just got to go. Now, I don't understand why they even went there, but they said, you just got to go. But anyway, we pick up the story that this man, when Jesus was leaving, the man said, Lord, I want to go. I, I, I want to go with you. I mean, you've done so much for me yeah. that, yeah. that I, I don't yeah. want to stay here. I, I just want to go with yeah. you. And, and so Jesus rejected his request. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, no, I don't want you to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where the, the scripture I really want to pick up and hone in on. The Bible says that when Jesus told him, no, I want you to go back. I want you to return yeah. home. Yeah. And I want you to tell what great thing right. God has done for you. Right. I, I'm here to tell you this morning, saints, that the best sermons don't come across the pulpit. Yeah. The best sermons come from your life when Jesus has changed you. Yeah. When Jesus has touched your life. Yeah. And, and that's the best yeah. sermon you can yeah. ever tell anybody. You ain't got to go to school to learn how to write a sermon. Come if on. God has done anything for you, yeah. then you can tell yeah. somebody yeah. about the good yeah. Jesus. That's the sermon that everybody needs to hear. Yeah. How that God picked you up, yeah. turned you around, yeah. and put your feet on solid ground. You, the story that people need to hear is that when Jesus touched your life, yeah. he changed you. Yeah. And so we find in this story, he said, return home. Return home. Return home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like this story because yeah. of this scripture because he said, return home. Uh -huh. Here's a man that at one time didn't have a home. Yeah had left home and, and was living in the tomb. He didn't have a home. And Jesus said, listen, I don't want you to continue on living this way. I want you to go back home. Because somebody got to see what God has done yes. for you. I, 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 I'm trying to tell you this morning that somebody got to see what God has done for you. You, you notice in the story, he said, now go home and this is what I want you to tell. I want you to tell what God has done for you. I want you to tell the many things that he's helped you to overcome. Now, he didn't say, go home and tell what all you went through. You see, everybody know what you went through. Uh -huh. I, I remember the song that, that the person said, everybody saw me when I failed, yeah. but did nobody see me when I got up. I mean, and yeah. so everybody already know what yeah. kind of bad person you yeah. used to be, yeah. how you used to run the street, how you used to do all the stuff you used yeah. to do. Everybody already know that. But what they didn't see was when God touched your life. Yeah. And so Jesus said, you need to go back home. Uh -huh. You need to return back to your family. You need to let them see what God has done for yeah. you. You need to recap what God has done for you. And he said, you need to go tell them of all the many things that God has done yeah. in your life. Yeah. Amen. Somebody ought to yeah. pray the Lord right now. Yeah. I try to tell somebody today that if God has done anything for you, yeah. has he done anything for your life, Come you need now. to run and tell him. Yeah. You need to stop telling all the other stuff, but you need to stay focused yeah. on what God has uh -huh. done for you. Yeah. You need to run and tell your run neighbor. Tell I, I can yeah. hear this man now. He's telling folk what God has yeah. done for him. Uh, when he couldn't talk to nobody, yeah. now he can tell what God has yeah. done for him. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so therefore we find that this man, the Bible says, he said, return home. What I like about this story also is 
The man didn't wait till he got home to start telling about Jesus. Yes. The Bible says that on his way home, he went through a lot of cities. Mm -hmm. And as he was going through the cities, he began to tell folk about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. He began to tell people about how God had changed his life, uh -huh. how God had touched him way down. Yes. You know, you know, you got to realize something, saints, that God can reach way yes. down and pick somebody up. God, God, God's arm is not too short to save. Yes. God is not too weak to, to over, help you overcome what you got going on in your life. He was able to tell somebody yes. on the way home. He was testifying to the goodness of Jesus, yes. and it reminded saints. We ain't got to wait to get home in glory yes. to start praising the Lord. We ain't got to wait till we get home in heaven to start talking about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. While we're here now in these different cities, yes. as we're traveling through this strange place, yes. we need to tell somebody about Jesus. On our way to glory, we got to tell somebody how Jesus changed our lives, how he changed our minds, how he closed us, yes. how he got us in yes. a new home. Yes. 
axe his hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. This man didn't wait to get home. He went on and told everybody about the Lord. Amen. Everybody he met, he couldn't wait to tell them about the goodness of Jesus and all that God had done for him. Yeah. Everything that the Lord had done for him, he wanted to tell somebody. And Jesus told him, he said, look, man, you can't follow me, but I want you to go and just return home. Tell somebody about how good God has been and say that is our life. We are here on this earth to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Yeah. We're going to tell somebody about how God has helped us to make it over. We're going to tell somebody about the living word and the truth transformative power of God. Amen. I know all of us haven't lived good lives. I know surely God just didn't save all of us because we were so good. I'm sure that all of us have done some things, have been some places that we ought not have been, but yet God saved us. He rescued us. He changed our lives. He took the taste right out of our mouth. I can hear folk now that used to be on drugs saying that the Lord has changed them. Those that used to be on alcohol saying that the Lord has changed them. Those that used to be killers and murderers, thieves, those that used to be adulterers and fornicators, I know that the word of God has yeah. changed them yeah. because God can change anybody. Yeah. It doesn't matter what degree you are lost yeah. in sin. It doesn't matter how far you are down in sin. The Bible says wherever sin abound, grace much more abound. God can reach you wherever you are and whatever you got going on. Don't think that the Lord has given up on you because God knows his power. He knows and yeah. understands his salvation plan and what he want to do in your life. Yes. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. Some of us years ago probably thought we wouldn't even be standing here. We grew up in rough places. Come on, man. We had rough lives. Yeah. Friends got murdered. Mm -hmm. I, I can go back one time to um, a, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, and we used to run the road. Mm -hmm. We were in our right mind either. And he was a very good friend of mine. Every time you saw him, you saw me. Or if you saw me, you saw him. And one night, he went out by himself. And my grandfather woke me up I was taking a nap at my grandparents' house. He woke me up. He said, son, he said, uh, your friend got killed last night. Mm, mm, mm. And um, he told me that your friend was at a club. Mm. And the man accused him of not paying to get in. And so my friend told him, said, I'll be back. When he came back, the man in the door was waiting on him, shot and killed him. Mm, mm, mm. And my grandfather said this, I'll never forget it. He said, boy, mm. if you'd have been with him last night, yeah. You'd have been dead. Yeah. So I know about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. Mm. I know how God can change you yes. and turn you around. Yes. I know how God can yes. change your mind. Mm. I know how God can use you yes. even though you've been through a lot. Mm. I know how God yes. can rescue you from the, the grip of the lion. I yes. know how God oh, can man. rescue you from yeah. the devil that's trying to take you out. I know a God that can rescue yeah. you right where you are. Yeah. I know Jesus the Christ. Yeah. When he came into my life, uh -huh. it changed my life. Yeah. It changed my attitude, yeah. changed where I come from, changed what I thought about, yeah. and now I live my life to the glory of God. Everybody yeah. I meet, I got to tell somebody. I got to run and tell that. Yeah. I got to tell what Jesus has done for me. Yeah. I got to tell how God lifted me up out of the miry clay. Turned me around, put my feet on solid ground, taught me how to teach and preach the word of God. I got to tell somebody yeah. about the goodness of Jesus. Yeah. And saints, you too have been through a lot. Your life has been in shambles, but yet God yeah. has saved you. Yeah. Don't hide that lamp. Don't hide that light. Be a servant to the world. Tell the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. I just want the saints everywhere. Run and tell that. Don't talk about what's going on necessarily in the world, but talk about what God has done for you. How he's done in your life. How he's rescued you. How he's changed you. That testify to the goodness of Jesus. It's our moral and spiritual responsibility to tell the world about Jesus the Christ and all that he has Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, I tell you this morning, I'm filled up because I know the power of God. Yes. I know how he can change a life. Yes. 
that's going in the wrong direction. Yes. I know how Jesus can lift you up mm -hmm. and, and plant your feet on solid ground. I know how Jesus can yes. do that. I've been in places now that I've been saved that I thought to myself, um, man, you got to have all kinds of credentials to get here. And God got me in that place. Yes. And I can only glorify God. Yes. I, I've seen people that only people who probably had affluence and, and, had, and had other people to get them in. And I was there. And I just thank God for that. Yes. Oh, that ain't me. That's got to do with the saving grace of yes. Jesus. Yes. And God will open up a door that nobody can close. Yes. And we got to realize that, say, we serve a living God. A God that's able to do all things but fail. And we got to tell the world about the goodness of Jesus yes. and all that he's done for yes, us. Yes, yes. We got to tell that, saints. Because God is still on the throne yes. and he's still in the saving business. Yes. And so, I just want to share that with you this morning. And I want you to realize that God is able, yes. more than able, yes. to take care of you and to do everything that you Never thought he could do. God can do that. Because that's what he does. He takes care of all of us. He makes sure that we got food on the table. He makes sure that we got clothes on our back. That's the kind of God that we serve. And he definitely makes sure that we got a sound mind. And so therefore, saints, take this word and go tell that. Tell somebody about how God changed you. Tell somebody about how he lifted you up. Testify of the goodness of Jesus. I thank you this morning, saints. I praise your holy name. And anybody out there don't know Christ and the pardon of your sin, you yeah. know now is the time. Yeah. It's a time for you to be saved. Yeah. It's a time for you to be saved. Now listen, I wasn't sitting around thinking about I need to be saved. That ain't what I was thinking. God just saved me. He came yeah. my life and I, I couldn't resist. His overwhelming love mm -hmm. just wrapped around me and I said, I yield, Lord. And that's how it works with God. If you feel God wrapping his arms of love around yeah. you, then guess what? I know you're going to accept the Lord. And I know you're going to give God some praise. And so therefore, saints, praise his name. Yeah. Tell the goodness of Jesus. Tell what God has done for you. Yes. Run and tell that, saints. God bless you. May the Lord continue to smile upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.